today I'm going to talk about how to take back your brain from the narcissist. Hi, I'm Nanette. Welcome back to Narcissism Exposed. So have any of you thought about how can I lose some weight? And you begin to make a plan and you strategize and you think about, okay, I'm going to regimen my food intake and really plan out my daily uh, m my meals. And then I'm going to start doing some aerobics and I'll get into some weight training, maybe even hire a personal trainer. And then over time, your results will be measurable. You'll be able to see a slimmer, thinner person, a little more athletic. You begin to see uh, a difference in how you look and how you feel. Now, have any of you ever tried to work out your brain? And that sounds like a really silly question. However, did you know that your brain is wired and it can change and also grow and get stronger. And what part of your brain I'm specifically talking about is your frontal lobe. And in that frontal lobe is the area where you have what's called your willpower and also where cognitive thinking takes place. So with training your brain, there isn't going to be some special food or aerobics or weight training and there's not going to be some uh, physically visual transformation in a sense of your brain right so to the naked eye right you really can't measure it so let's compare your body with your brain in comparison to what you do to it to enhance any types of change so let's say with your body if you were to feed it junk food continuously, everyday junk food. And then you just had little to no movement and uh, you didn't do any type of weight training whatsoever, you are eventually going to feel the effects of that. And how would that register, right? That would register in less energy, uh, feelings of fatigue, uh, aches and pains, maybe less lung capacity. It could develop into certain types of diseases and of course, weight gain. As opposed to adding healthier food and aerobics and your weight training, you can register positive uh, visual results where you have that greater energy, you're more slender, you have greater strength and longevity too. So what about the brain? Although the brain is not a muscle, it's an organ, it's a complex cellular structure that can actually function like a muscle in that it can be trained. And you can cause it to grow and to strengthen. So as I said earlier, the frontal lobe is responsible for your willpower and also for cognitive thinking. And the frontal lobe is constantly rewiring itself based on what type of stimulus and what you are feeding it. And this is called neuroplasticity, where the brain is adapting to the stimulus that is being placed on it. So where am I going with all this? Your time with the narcissist was a horrendous time, and I hope and pray you're not with the narcissist right now. However, when you think back to the time with the narcissist, you had the belittling, the berating, the shaming, crushing and chiseling away at your boundaries and calling you names and just not validating any of your feelings or your opinions or your input gaslighting you to make you think that you're losing your memory or worse yet losing your mind like you're going crazy or ghosting you and doing all those sly and secretive things to undermine you and to basically cause destruction in your life it was a whirlwind of confusion and chaos i know that and eventually your brain got used to either pleasure with the narcissist or pain. There was no gray in between moments. There was no uh, blending of your feelings and uh, consideration, communication, respect. There was either uh, his or her, the narcissist way, 
and if you did it their way, there was pleasure. And the moment you differed or showed your uniqueness or displayed your own opinions and your unique stand on situations, there was pain. And that's all, that's the black and white reality of the narcissist, but that's not your reality. But with your time with the narcissist, it over time got rewired. Your brain got rewired to actually think in terms of not black and white necessarily like the narcissist, but pleasure or pain. And so what, what I'm sharing with you today is that based on what you are now going to feed yourself great nutritious food, if you will, and you are going to retrain your brain, you're going to get your brain back from the narcissist and the damage he or she caused to it, and you are now going to rewire it to where it is now going to function and grow and get strengthened. You see, the frontal lobe, which as I said, is responsible for willpower and for cognitive thinking, is a result of acquiring knowledge through your experience, your thoughts, and your environmental input. In all of your experience with the narcissistic abuse that you went through, your brain was rewired to believe the lies of the narcissist to the point that your willpower became at an all-time low and your cognitive thinking was dominated and affected by the damaging lies. So let's go back to how to take your brain back from the narcissist. So we're going to talk about what you can do to take your brain back from the narcissist and even though you have detached and you're in no contact, you still need to do a little rewiring with your brain. So here's how we're going to retrain your brain. We're going to use food, but not the kind of food you feed your body, right? And we're going to use exercise. But again, not the kind of exercise we use with weight training or aerobic machines. So for food, we're going to use, number one, self-talk. And we're going to use positive self-talk because let's face it, how many times have you found yourself and caught yourself talking negatively to yourself? Like, how could I have ever stayed that long with him or her? Um, how did I take that abuse? Or now I don't even know who I am or what I want for my life and my future. And you just start ruminating and your thoughts are all about the time of the destructive time with the narcissist. No, that's not the kind of food I want you to feed yourself now. And to get into more detail on the effects that your self-talk will have on your healing, you can go ahead and click this video or it will be down in the description below. But I want you to start talking to yourself like the precious, wonderful person that you are. That's right. You have a pure heart. You are good. You are kind. You give everything of yourself. You love God. You love Jesus Christ. You walk on God's word. You are a loving and kind person. That's what I want you to remind yourself of and to get yourself back into positive self-affirmation. And the second type of food that you're going to give yourself is you're going to feed yourself scriptures. That's right. You're going to get a list of, of scriptures and you're going to retemorize them, retain them in your memory. You're going to memorize them. And you know what? In those weak moments where you feel like you just want to beat yourself up and you want to talk about the horrible time that you had with the narcissist, substitute those thoughts, push those thoughts away and just get out God's word and start reading it out loud. So you're seeing it, you're hearing it, you're speaking it. And then over time, choose certain verses that are, that are really uplifting to you and memorize them and walk around with your vacuuming or grocery shopping and your mind wants to stray back to, you know, those destructive thoughts with the narcissist, then you've got some fuel to give yourself, some food and fuel to feed your brain, that frontal lobe there, to acknowledge the greatness of God's word in your life as it applies to you. 
and then the exercise that you can do to rewire that frontal lobe, rewire your brain, retrain your brain, take your brain back, is you can meditate. That's right, where you sit very quietly somewhere where there's no disturbances and you close your eyes, which helps to keep away any distractions and you just focus on the good in your life. I like to just spend that time meditating and talk to God and just remind myself of how great and good and kind my father is and how he's brought me out of the depths of hell. And now I'm back on my path of truth and destiny. So just take yourself to a happy place. It could even be where you're meditating and thinking of yourself on a quiet beach with the waves softly ebbing and flowing. And you're just at peace within yourself and you're calm and you're thinking positive thoughts. So wherever that meditation takes you personally to a better place, a happy place, practice that over and over again. What that's doing is actually rewiring the brain. And I talked about memorizing scripture or your favorite mantras. This is both a food and an exercise because you are challenging yourself to put these things to memory and to retain it within uh, your, your brain cells so that whenever you want to conjure it up, it's there for you at the drop of a hat whenever you need it. And another way to retrain your brain is to exert the self-control in the way of a personal command to yourself. So let's say uh, there's a rainy afternoon and your brain wants to go back to ruminating about the narcissistic abuse you endured. You can have a, you can talk to yourself and say, no, we're not going there. We are going to think positive thoughts and just exert that self-control in an audible, even say it out loud where you're saying, no, we're going to go this direction, not that direction. It really, really works. And over time, you are retraining your brain that even in a split second where your brain wants to go to the negative, it will remember the command that you gave it because you're retraining your brain. Another great way to retrain your brain is to build new habits. And it's not about distracting yourself from the pain you had endured. It's about giving your, your brain that exercise of building a new habit. Anytime you build a new habit, your brain cells, your brain tissue is growing and getting strengthened. This all adds to helping with the power of the willpower, enabling willpower and cognitive thinking. And the fifth exercise kind of goes in hand in hand with, with finding a new habit and building a new habit is find a new skill, develop a new skill, something that you've never done before that maybe you've been thinking for years and decades even maybe that you want to develop a new skill, whatever it could be, maybe carpentry, right? Or uh, even crocheting a blanket or a sweater or doing something fun and you learn a new skill and that's helping to retrain your brain and to rebuild it as well. And I have to tell you, there was a study with participants where they took an MRI uh, of their brain beforehand <clears throat> and then they developed certain skills, went through certain tactics and so on, such as I've described to you. And then when they took an after MRI scan and it proved that the gray matter had started to grow in the prefrontal cortex. So practicing mindful meditation for only a few minutes every day can really boost your willpower by building up gray matters in areas of the brain that regulate emotions and govern decision making. Now to get to a great scripture of God's word where this science can be applied in light of God's word. And it says in Romans chapter 12 verse 2, God instructs us to do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. 
You see, God made this brain a certain way, and he knows exactly how it operates. And in this verse, God is instructing us exactly what to do to help train our brain or renew our mind to the greatness of God's word. And I'm going to break this verse down for you. And that word, conform, that word conformed means the blueprints uh, or schematics, the, the game plan, if you will. God's word says, do not be conformed to the blueprint of this world or the ages. And if you refer this to the narcissist, do not allow your brain to stay conformed to what they put you through in where you, you think kind of black and white or pain, pleasure and pain. No, no more. They, that time with the narcissist rewired your brain cells and now you, we are retraining your brain to accept the greatness of God's word that tells us do not be conformed anymore. We're going to move forward with this, but to be transformed. And that word transformed is a great word. The Greek word is metamorphomai. And you can guess what English word we get from it, which is metamorphosis. And you can think of the, the caterpillar, right? Who goes into its, spins its silk cocoon, and within seven to 11 days, guess what happens? That there's a fantastic transformation. The, the caterpillar becomes a beautiful butterfly, just blossoming out. And it took time. It didn't just happen like this. The gestation, it, it took seven to 11 days and the transformation was incredible. So God's word is telling you, don't be conformed to the worldly stuff and the damaging effects of the world, but be transformed like a butterfly over time. And how do you do that? By the renewing of your mind. And that word renewing is a verb, it's an action. It takes work to renew your mind. It takes work to retrain your brain. It takes work to switch from, from one way of thinking, like the way the narcissist has, has damaged your way of thinking, to the right way of thinking, which is God's holy word. So that word renew can literally mean new up, right? or putting on, renewing. And there's a saying, the renewing of your mind to God's word is the key to power. That's right. That unlocks the power that you can take God's word and you can transform your mind. And the last part of that verse where it says that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, you don't need to prove it to God. He knows what his word is good and acceptable and perfect, but to prove it to you. And the more that you work at this, where you're putting on the word of God, which is where the true healing comes from, and you keep at it every day with the memorizing the scripture, with the positive self-talk, claim who you are in Jesus Christ. And it's going to take a little time and a little work, but trust me, you will see it. You can't see it physically, obviously, unless we went and took an MRI, right? But you can feel it in your attitude, in the, the, the heaviness being lifted out of your heart, in the more peace and joy that you're experiencing, which is on the inside of you. And so that's what my encouragement is to you today. Take back your brain from the narcissist and retrain it and rebuild it. And it can happen. Scientifically, it's proven that the brain will start to show growth and a rewiring. But God's word is the one that really sets us free where he says, God tells us to be transformed like a butterfly by renewing our mind to God's word and make that transformation. So I want you to leave your comments down below and any scriptures that you want to share and also any prayer requests. And know that I love you. I think of you every day. I pray for you all the time and share this information with others. 
So if you found this helpful, go ahead and hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed already, do hit the subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I put out a video. And until next time, walk in peace and be blessed in your hearts.